I'm Marty Stauffer. In my opinion, the lynx is the most beautiful of North America's wild cats. It's also one of Mother Nature's living mysteries. Although we're only starting to unravel the hows and whys of its life story, we do know where this elusive feline lives. It's here that our story begins. Duluth, Minnesota a thriving metropolis in a land of lakes. Above it, Superior National Forest, gateway to the great North Woods. This vast boreal forest stretches from the rocky coast of Maine to the Rocky Mountains of the West. The lynx once roamed these woods. It continues to live throughout most of Canada, but not many areas below the border can boast of lynx. Urbanization and overtrapping are to blame. Its fortune is linked to that of the snowshoe hare. Every 10 years or so, the populations of both predator and prey rise and fall almost in unison. Let's find out more about this mystery. Join me on a journey to where the winter wind blows cold and the snow falls deep, to the wild realm of the North Woods Lynx. The boreal forest, black spruce, white birch, gray winters. Of all the wild cats, the lynx alone has adapted to make its living in these northernmost woodlands. Equally well equipped for life here is the snowshoe hare with its soft snow white coat and wide fur covered feet. The lynx stalks its quarry. The hungry and the hunted. An age-old relationship. Both animals have trained their entire lives for these few minutes. This is their Olympics. This moment marks the supreme effort of their existence. They're not enemies, but rather, they're united in a bond that is as essential and eternal as any on Earth.
We humans hate to see a cute little bunny caught and killed. But the snowshoe hare is not as helpless as it might appear. Although prey is often hard to catch, some lynx will manage to survive long enough to reproduce. Nature has timed their breeding season for late winter. The adult male and female, on their own for most of the year, now come together to make new life. Courtship is a relatively noisy affair for the normally quiet cats. First, they get to know one another. Then the slightly larger male on the left calls and presents his head to the female. As she comes more into heat, she starts to return the male's attention. Once she's ready, the pair will mate several times over the course of a few days. In a gesture, common to the cat family, the tom bites the back of the female's neck during copulation. After mating, he will leave her in search of other females and will never know the kittens that are born two months later. In spring, the female gave birth to two tiny kittens in her den under a hollow log. Two months later, Summer finds them sampling some of their first solid food, a ruffed grouse 
that their mother has delivered to the den entrance. By autumn, the kittens are ready for some important play hunting on their own. Mother watches from the den, sensing that they're old enough for this independent outing. Curious as all good cats should be, the kittens come across some other creatures of the North Woods. A badger digging in for winter. And a white-tailed deer. It might have to run for its life if the kittens were older or hungrier. In an area rich in prey, a single lynx will restrict its hunting to about one square mile. When prey is scarce, they must travel farther.
winter. The family is still together now, but will probably separate before next spring. The snowshoe hare population has plummeted to the bottom of its 10-year cycle. Now, there is only one hare for every 12 acres. At the peak, there could be nearly 100 times more, as many as eight for every one acre. Because the hares have exhausted their winter food supply, the lynx, in turn, face possible starvation. Her family will not eat tonight. Winter wears on, with fewer and fewer hares to be found. The family is still a group, but is becoming more loosely knit as time passes. One kitten stays with the female, while the other wanders off on its own. It looks as if the mother and her other kitten are playing, but their play could turn to aggression if they don't find food soon. The mother lynx trained her young to hunt. Now, it's mother nature who holds all of their lives in her hands. The chase you saw a little while ago was filmed in slow motion. This one is filmed in regular speed. Watch how fast the lynx and hare actually run. You'll barely be able to see what's happening. Finally, the mother makes a catch. It's odd to me that some people can think of predators as guilty killers and of their prey as innocent victims. Truth is, the first year of life is hard for hunter and hunted alike. This is when many predators die, killed by others or when they simply don't find food. Not many lynx kittens will live through this season's famine. The mother does not share this meal with her hungry kittens. 
Maybe she's making the point that her young need to hunt for themselves. More likely, her possessiveness stems from a deep and primary law of nature, species survival. No matter how hard it gets, she will survive to mate and conceive again. It seems cruel, but nature is only concerned with preserving the species. On its own now, one of the young lynx makes a desperate attempt at the only other prey that's still available, ruffed grouse. Near the end of this long, brutal winter, I'm not surprised to discover one of the kittens, dead of starvation. I am saddened, though. This animal is one of nature's finest achievements. Its stiff ear tufts function like antenna. Its four canines are strong and sharp. Its huge feet keep it afloat, even in the softest snow. Its claws are retractable. But I can feel the starved body under its still beautiful fur. This wild cat evolved for survival. Still, just as the snowshoe hare lives and dies, so must the lynx. And the interwoven pattern of their living and dying is as ancient as these northern forests.
You know, I always thought that men bought fur coats for women. Call me a male chauvinist, but that's just the way I thought it was. Statistics now show that more and more women are buying fur coats for themselves. And a lot of those coats are lynx. If you're thinking of buying a lynx coat, please don't. I'll be the first to admit that their fur is beautiful. But don't you really think it looks better on them? There are dozens of non-fur alternatives. But if you must choose to wear fur, please select that of a ranch-raised animal, such as mink, raccoon, or fox, and not that of a wild trapped animal that's seriously declining in numbers. Let's leave the lynx skins on their original owners. They wear them with more natural elegance than any human ever could. Do your part to preserve them so that future generations can also enjoy this living mystery, the Northwoods Lynx. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.